In this video, I'll provide an overview of how you can use Radiant to evaluate model performance. So I've just started up Radiant from our studio, and the first thing I'll do is load a state file. So one of the nice things about Radiant is that you can save uh, your settings and all the analysis that you've done in a particular session into a state file, mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and load that back up. So in this case, I'm going to load up a demo file uh, that has a variety of different components in it. So one of those is a report, so we're now in the R report tab, and this is a complete report of all the analysis that I've done uh, inside Radiant with text to explain more or less what's going on. Um, I can go ahead and redo all the analysis that I did before by clicking the Knit Report button. And that takes a second because it's doing a variety of different data transformations and analyses. There we go. Uh, but once it's done, it's going to uh, generate a pretty nicely formatted HTML output here on the right side that shows output from various different models, uh, different plots that were generated, uh, evaluations, and ultimately here at the bottom, uh, a confusion matrix and some, some comparison of models. So this is, of course, a little quick. So what I'd like to do is just show you step by step how, how all of this gets generated. Um, and to start off with, I'm just going to go to a separate session that I opened, which has two data sets in it. One of them is the DVD data set. And I can just go ahead and load that from examples, load examples, and then a variety of different data sets will be loaded up. And I've actually done a couple of tweaks to this data set. Um, and it made a working copy called DVD underscore work that has a slightly different training variable. So training variable is either zero or one, uh, so that we can identify uh, data points that we want to use for estimation and for validation. And I've added a few random variables to the, to the analysis that shouldn't do much, uh, but possibly with some of our tools, for example, a neural network, uh, might end up overfitting the data. So uh, the first step is going to be setting a filter. So we're going to use a training and a validation data set. And so the total number of observations in the data set is 20,000. And so I'm going to set a filter training is equal to 1, so that I'm only going to use 4,000 observations for training and keep the remainder of the data set for validation. Now, this is a bit of an odd uh, ratio that I'm using here. Usually, you'll use something like 70% of your data for training and 30% for validation, or, or maybe even 50-50. Uh, but here, what I've done, I've, I'm only using um, a small fraction of the data for training so that I'm more likely to get some overfitting, because I want to demonstrate how that, how that would look in the, in the output. So I've set a training variable. Now I can start doing some of my analysis. All right. So we're going to start with a logistic regression. Uh, that's in the model menu. And there are a number of variables I want to select here. So uh, as explanatory variables, so uh, whether or not you've got a coupon, how long, uh, how many often you've purchased, how long it's been since you last purchased, and a number of these random, randomly generated data points. Uh, and to estimate the logistic regression, I simply hit the Estimate button or I press Control enter or uh, Command-Enter on the Mac. Right, so there's a keyboard shortcut available. So you get the usual output you would get for a logistic regression. Uh, we can also make some plots to look at the uh, results. For example, a coefficient plot. And so this is actually an odds ratio plot uh, that's on a log scale. And so we can try to evaluate how the, how the model looks and how the different variables compare to one another. Now, of course, comparing these coefficients or odds ratios is a bit tricky because they might be on a different scale, which is certainly the case here. So what we can do is just re-estimate the model by clicking Standardize and Estimate. And our model is re-estimated with standardized odds ratios and coefficients. And if I go back to the Plot tab, you'll notice that the plot will automatically be updated. I don't have to click anything or do anything automatically. I get the updated result. And if I want to either download this graph or include the result I've done so far into a report, I could click here on the report results icon. And that will actually take me, and let me just show you what that would look like. This will take me uh, to the R report tab and actually insert the code that's used internally by Radiant to generate this logistic regression set of output. So let me just actually run that, just that piece. And you'll see we get the exact same output here. Right? So perfectly reproducible. All right. Now, we started with a logistic regression. What we want, though, is we want a predicted value from that uh, logistic regression so that we can ultimately compare different models to one another. And so I'm on the Predict tab. I'm going to select the data set that I'm currently working on, which is DVD Work. 
and automatically it starts generating predictions for me. And we're going to store those and add those to the data set with the name predict logit. I can, I can change the name to whatever I like, but in this case, I'm just going to use the default. Okay, so hit store. And now you'll notice if I scroll down here, that there's another variable that's been added to the data set called predict logit. And I'll be able to use that for model evaluation in other words. So the next step is I'm going to estimate a neural network. So you notice as soon as I go here that, that because it's quite quite common that you'll estimate models of different types, and I started out with a logistic regression, uh, that the variables I used from the logistic regression are automatically selected here. I can unselect those if I want, but it's kind of convenient that they're already available so that I can easily estimate the same model uh, with the same, the same performance. Okay. Now I'm actually going to make this model a little bigger, uh, eight nodes in the hidden layer, and reduce the decay rate uh, to give the parameters, give the, the larger parameters a better chance of actually showing up. A larger weight, I should say, uh, and I'm going to hit estimate. And you'll notice, by the way, here that in the output, I can see that a filter is being used. So I'm only estimating on the training data set. I can again make some different plots. For example, I can show a network plot that indicates how the different inputs are linked to the nodes in the hidden layer and ultimately to the output node. Okay. All right. Again, I want to do a prediction for model comparison. So I'm going to choose the data set that I'm interested in, David D. Work automatically the predictions get produced. And if I want to store that, add it to the data set, I go ahead and click store. So the final model that I'll use here, and I'm going over this quite quickly just as a demonstration of, of what you can do. I'm going to create a decision tree or a, a classification tree in this case. Uh, again, the same variables are selected. I am not going to uh, set the number of nodes to estimate. I'm just going to let that go. So you'll notice that if I do that, it estimates quite a large decision tree, right? So all of these are nodes in the decision tree. Now, the text form of this is a little difficult to, uh, to evaluate. So what we could do is make a plot of that tree. Not that it helps us a ton in this case, because it's still a really large tree, right? But at least it's a slightly larger, larger uh, nicer visualization. We can zoom in a bit to get a better idea of what's going on in the plot. Uh, for example, this is a node where there are only four respondents in this node, and none of them purchased the DVD. Uh, here's a node with 112 people in it, 58% of those purchased it, okay, and so on. Um, I can also, if I want some more information about what's going on in a particular uh, uh, branch of the tree, I can hover over it and it'll tell me how many people are, are in the tree still at that part of, it, uh, of the development and what the proportion of people is that purchased. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not a very useful tree, so we'll want to prune that a little bit. And so why don't we set up pruning? This uses uh, cross-validation, tenfold cross-validation, uh, to determine prediction error in a validation set. And it tells us that the minimum error is achieved at four nodes. So we can re-estimate the decision tree at four nodes. Before I do that, actually, um, I want uh, to do a prediction on the model with the uh, Sorry, on the on the large decision tree, where I basically didn't do any pruning. So I'm going to call that large, and go ahead and store that. And now I'm going to re-estimate the model. And so this is based on a model with four nodes in the hidden layer. And again, do a prediction, and go ahead and store that as well. Okay. So I've estimated a number of different models. Let's go ahead and see how we can compare those. We're going to go to, go to model evaluate classification. And so there are now four variables, predicted variables uh, that I created. Prediction from logistic regression, prediction from neural network, prediction from an unpruned decision tree, and prediction from a pruned decision tree. Okay. Now, uh, let's assume that the cost of, of getting the coupon to a potential customer is a dollar, and the margin that we're going to make, excluding that cost of, of contact, is about eight. And so what I can do now is do a comparison of, let's start with a, uh, a neural network and see if we can find any evidence that is overfitting the data. So I want results for both the training and the validation data set. I'm going to choose the particular neural network and then hit evaluate. And so this is going to create a, a table for me that I can download to CSV if I want. But it basically gives me information about things like the cumulative proportion of customers, cumulative respondents, and I can use that for things like gains charts. Let me actually change the, the number of quantiles a bit so I get a slightly more detailed plot. 
uh, in the plots tab. So this is now uh, 50 different points uh, the uh, plot is being evaluated. And so we're looking at both training and validation and let's take a look at the gains chart. So the red is the created gains chart in the training sample and the turquoise is the prediction in the validation sample. So we can definitely see some daylight between these two, which is just that we are indeed overfitting uh, a little bit with the neural network with eight nodes in the hidden layer and decay of 0 0.05. Now that's a little bit of overfitting. Uh, if we compare two variables uh, that we generated through using decision trees, we might see something a bit more uh, impressive. So let's take a look at just the training data, but now look at the two variables that were created using decision trees. So I hit evaluate, and now we're looking at just the training data. I selected training down here, and we can see that the in the training data, at least, the decision tree, uh, without any pruning, performs substantially better than the pruned decision tree. But of course, that's not that, that impressive, uh, because it's the training data set what we really care about is how the model performs in the validation data set. So let's select validation, reevaluate, and now we see that, if anything, the, um, the pruned decision tree performs slightly better than our uh, large unpruned decision tree, which is, of course, a classic example of overfitting. Now, the final step that I'll do here is that I'll actually compare the four different model predictions. Um, and instead of just a gain chart, I'll also add a profit chart, hit evaluate again. And now I've got a full set of gains charts and profits charts. and both of those suggest to me that I should be looking at the logistic regression, at least based on the current set of model specifications and the training data that I've used, that I get the best performance in the validation data set based on the logistic regression. Um, I can also take a look in the confusion tab where I get information on things like the AUC of the different models. Again, that confirms that the logistic regression performs best. We'd also generate the highest level of profits using this model. And if all of this analysis, I would now go, like to go ahead and add to the report. Again, I can click on the uh, report uh, icon here at the bottom. And in this case, it'll add code at the bottom of my report file to generate this information about the uh, confusion matrix that you just saw. Okay, this was a very quick overview of some of the abilities that Gradient has to uh, create uh, model validation uh, and generate reports.